All right, so as we head uh, towards the end of the year, we're going to do something uh, unprecedented here. Not unprecedented, just to clarify, uh, unprecedented in the history of media. We are going to have a naughty or nice reflection on the year that was in news in 2016. Where did you come up with that idea? That is genius. Absolutely. You know what? It's, uh, I, I took it from President Trump. It's his idea because all of his ideas are the best ideas. Uh, so, Des, uh, we've got uh, Brad and Danielle in house as uh, we do our final proper hot topic panel of the year. And so let's reflect back on the year that was 2016 amidst the dumpster fire uh, that the last 12 months have been. Let's find something nice to say about an individual or an organization. Who gets the biggest gift under the tree for you this year? We'll start with Danielle. Uh, I'd have to give the biggest gift to Don Iveson and City Council. So uh, there's, I don't like everything about them. I've spent a whole year bashing them. So maybe <laughs> that's why I feel a bit of a surprise to Metro <laughs> readers. The year. Um, but you know, we've seen a lot of work uh, on indigenizing culture. I've seen a lot of work on affordable housing. Don Iveson has tackled really big issues like infrastructure and racism this year. So uh, you got to give some props to City Council. Okay, and who did he beat out? Who, if you had, if you would have been your second on the list? My second on the list uh, would have to be Paula Simons for her journalism. I just she's really rocked it this year, and uh, and I love you, Paula. <laughs> there you go. I love this heartwarming <laughs> moment. And you know what? It's true. You know what? There's no question that uh, uh, her piece about serenity in the journal uh, had the rarest of impacts, getting all parties on board with with a cause. So that of yeah. itself is a very unique scenario. It's certainly deserving of the props, uh, Brad. Uh, who are you giving the Hatchimal to? Oh, 2016. Hatchimal is is going to uh, Mr. Daryl Cates, and I think that him and his group in bringing Rogers Place to the city and what that has done to Edmonton's downtown. I'm a fairly new resident of the city, but everyone I've spoken to has said that facility has completely changed the complexion of Edmonton's downtown scene. You look at the restaurants, you look at the bars on game nights when there's events there. It's full, it's packed, it's filled, and I think he's uh, coming with more investment in that region than what he had promised originally. So. Thumbs up and a nice Hatchimal to Mr. Daryl Cates. And I don't think you agree with yeah, that. Yeah, let's not read <laughs> that. A bit of a I weird think, look uh, there. I feel like I'm being trolled right now. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I guess if you only talk to people in the suburbs, then you've definitely heard positive things. <laughs> in the downtown core, mixed reviews. We're not loving the surface parking lot. Uh, you know, people aren't loving the longest staircase in the city. What else do we got? Um, I don't, you know, I, he's just, I'm just not that into him. Okay, so is it just those those little things, or do you do you value petty. in the larger scope that I mean there is a sense of revitalization and a little bit of life being breathed there, into Yes, that, I mean so. if if we're going to be fair, if it's Christmas and we're going to be nice, absolutely <laughs> there's some revitalization going on. Um, but there's also displacement. There's also mm. been um, there's a sense that some residents have that they just the Kate's group and city council hasn't been quite honest in their dealings with the. The creation of the arena, community ranks, the focus, uh, the community focus hasn't really materialized yet. So let's not give too many props before. Uh, All right. So you, you sound you sound like uh, conservatives who are, who are hedging their bets with pipelines <laughs> right now. Right. Uh, Brad. It's not uh, the right pipeline. While we're still allowed to give away coal here in Alberta in 2016, who gets it for you this year? Well, uh, the coal dug straight out of Thorold, just north of Edmonton, goes to. Uh, City Council, well not City Council, City Administration I guess, Ooh, um, and fair. construction projects and the debacles we've seen there. You look at the Walterdale Bridge, it was supposed to be open um, this summer and that was already a year late and now we're not going to see it opening until next year because of delays in shipments of steel from Korea and they couldn't get the pavement done uh, in time before the weather decided to turn and it's not the only municipal construction project that we've seen big delays on. You look at some of the, the LRT stuff and I'm sure that we will see many more of that. It's been so bad that <laughs> <laughs> thinking now, well, we'll just do away with deadlines anyways. Absolutely, and that's a real thing. That's what that's yeah. the best no, I'm not joking. No, that's true. what we're thinking of doing. There you go. But I mean, you know what? We have to admit, despite the delays, that uh, the Metro line is iconic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're really making the news nationally yeah. this year, too. So in of itself, they've managed to accomplish that particular goal, even if it's in a very roundabout way. World class. Monorail, <laughs> monorail, monorail. <laughs> Uh, we can only hope for 2017. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, last hot topic panel of the year. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, of course, love to hear from you online on this, Twitter and Facebook. Uh, all the best in the new year to you, Danny. And uh, we will be right back. Don't go too far.